of good living move up to Schlitz. With just the kiss of the hops. Mr. Hopkiss, the kiss of the hops in Schlitz. How you doing? Um, I'm going to do douche sode It's going to feature vinyl albums. Got um, a few, like, relatively new releases and then a couple of... Uh, couple reissues that I totally didn't need, but I bought them. Um, and I'm going to show them. Would you, uh, would you be interested in a drink? I'm having something called Church Music IPA from the Shop Beer Company in downtown Tempe, Arizona. Kind of a, kind of an 80s kind of can. It's 6.7%, so... We're gonna have to get going. Um, two quick asides before we move on. You can skip this if you'd like. Um, last weekend I went to, or it was a three day weekend here in the United States. And I kinda had set up a day where I had a limited amount of time. And I was gonna go to a few record stores that I don't normally get to, just because of where I am. And so I timed it out. One store opened at 10, I was gonna be there at 10:15. Uh, the next store opened at 11, I, so then I would you know, go there next. Then the next, third store opened at noon, so I had it set up so I could be back because I needed to be somewhere. Um, so obviously, and I've, I've told a similar story before, except without the, the timeline. Um, get to the first store, it was between 10:15 and 10:30. Sign on the door says, we'll be back at 10. But they're not, yeah, they're not open. Um, so I sat there until eleven o'clock, and they were, they they never opened. It's just, uh, and it's not even that great of a record store, if uh, if I'm being honest here. <laughs> um, I almost certainly would have spent money. You know, I'm, if you haven't noticed, I'm the kind of guy that buys records. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. Now, maybe a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, in the comments, um, I was recommended this album because apparently it, it was cheap, um, cheap to get. I, I looked on Discogs, it was cheap, but I recognized them like, I think I have the, like, I have a promo CD of that. And then I, Things aren't easy to find. My CDs aren't easy to find. But anyway, then today I was I, I pulled out of a box, and this is it: Mescalito, One Path in a Million. That's what that's what's on, and that was re what was recommended to me. Um, and I already had it. I think it's from 2000. It's, you know, if you can hear it, I don't know how well you can hear it. This is the. I'm gonna start showing records now. This is. Um, New album, new debut album from a seven piece out of London, super hyped, called, um, the artist is Black Country, New Road, and the album is For the First Time. This is uh, the limited edition where the cover art is a negative, and actually there's a booklet too that's also, I think all the photos are negatives instead of, you know, <laughs> so maybe I'll put up a the little picture of the actual cover. It's on Ninja Tune, just came out a week or two ago. This is literally flying off shelves. I think the day of its release, the day after, I went to two different places that both had it, and I thought about buying it, but then thought I was gonna listen to it before I would buy it. Um, and then when I went back, maybe a day or two later, not only was were they all out, every place that I contacted in the area was out, like out of stock, they, they had sold out. And online, I couldn't even find anyone in the United States that had it in stock. And this is just a couple days after it was released. So maybe Ninja Tune didn't make very many of these or else they're, they're flying off shelves. So I'm gonna call this um, kind of post-rock with elements of jazz, post-punk, Klezmer music is present, I guess. Um, 
the album opens with an instru- with a long instrumental song. Um, it's kind of a jazzy klezmer track, almost like free jazz with klezmer music. <laughs> um, so somewhat boldly opening the record with that, and th- that song is um, creatively titled as well, called Instrumental. So only six tracks are all fairly lengthy. Some of the songs were previously released as singles, but I think they had been um, re-recorded and somewhat changed. The vocal style is very it's an interesting, like storytelling style. There is saxophone and violin, as well as the, your typical guitar, bass, drums situation. I think the bass player, the bass player is named is Tyler Hyde, and she's the daughter of Carl Hyde from the band or from the electronic artist Underworld. If you remember them, they're still around. <laughs> um, anyway, so super, this is super hyped up. I was expecting to really, like, I wasn't really expecting to really like this a lot. But it is, it is like exceeded my expectations. I think I like the, it's just a little, it's just different enough to keep me interested. Um, yeah, I'll show you the, it comes with a big, nice lyric booklet, this, which all, with also has the photos um, as negatives on this edition, I, I expect. It has like two pages for each um, each track with the, the photo and, and words, as I like to say. Oh, what was that? It says I could have I could have left the fair with my dignity intact, and fled from the stage with the world's second best slint tribute act. Did I already say there? Yeah, they're often compared to um, to slint to the band slint. And this is on um, some white vinyl. I actually like the um, the label on that. I saw you undressing. It was at the Cirque du Soleil, and it was such an intimate performance. I swear to God, you looked right at me. And let a silk red ribbon fall between your hands. Next up, this is um, this is a collaborative album from the Illinois psych folk artist Riley Walker and the Japanese um, Tokyo-based artist. Kikigaku Moyo. Um, I show Kikigaku Moyo on this channel. Um, Riley Walker's first record, I think, was called Primrose Green, if I'm remembering correctly. That was shown a lot on the uh, on different vinyl community channels when that around the time that one came out. I remember Roger Coleman showing it. I think he had. I think there was an issue with one of the, maybe like the US pressing wasn't very good, so we had to seek out a different one. Something like that, I seem to remember. Anyway, I got an email that this was coming out and I immediately ordered it without paying any attention to what it was because Kikigaku Moyo, I just kinda, I just buy this stuff because it, it oftentimes, oftentimes it's a you snooze, you lose situation with, with Kikigaku Moyo, the, the stuff just, it's available a short period of time and it's gone. And then even in the last couple of months, I've missed out on things, or at least on like early editions of things where I couldn't believe it. Like just like less than a day later, stuff is just gone. Stuff is selling really well. Um, so I didn't know what this was. I just ordered it, like I say. This is basically a, it's a 2018 live performance I read this story, I'm not gonna remember. It's in, it's they were, it's a performance from Utrecht, if I'm saying that right, in the Netherlands. Um, some sort of a festival, I take it, and they had different artists um, 
select another artist to perform with. And so the so Riley Walker selected Kiki Gakumoyo. So they did a set together, his band and Kiki Gakumoyo together. And then that apparently was cut up a bit to be two sideline tracks on this LP. So you've got, it's just a psychedelic, like improvised jam session is basically what this is. Um, when I first got it and listened to it, it's because the first side starts really slow. I would say the first seven minutes is just building. I'm like, I'm like this, is, this is not gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, but it, the second half of the first side picks up and the, the whole second half is good. It never really like, um, it never takes off. It's, it's fairly laid back. Um, but I, I've actually listened to this four or five times and, um, I like this a lot more than I would have expected to on paper, I think. Or maybe I like it as much as I would have expected to on paper. Yeah, I don't know. Marijuana is legal um, in the state of Arizona now, so there's probably more opportunity to, um, to spin this. So anyway, it's called Deep Fried Grandeur, Riley Walker and Kikagakumoyo, and it probably already is expensive. <laughs> from the, I guess it's the second critically acclaimed LP from the London band called Shame. The album is Drunk Tank Pink. It's uh, out on Dead Oceans as their first album was. First album was called Songs of Praise. Um, so I've got um, basically just call this indie rock. It's lumped in with the whole um, post-punk scene that's going on in um, in London. Um, to me this is very reminiscent of the Jesus Lizard. The singer Charlie, Charlie Steen is occasionally uh, occasionally sounds to me like David Yao a bit. This is the insert. The lyrics on it. This is the inner sleeve. This is on um, on pink vinyl. I would say um, it's not. This is not uh, super abrasive. I'll try to play a sample. I have a feeling that there's a chance I won't be able to get away with it on this one. <laughs> I'm turning my head from the wind It's cold, but I've been colder And as the dew seeps slowly through the holes And dampens my skin I feel the sting of mother nature I'm gonna close my eyes And this is the only place I can do it At the top of this hill I sit down Next 
next we've got a couple um couple reissues this one is a, a 1998 album first time on vinyl it is the artist his name is bill fox and the album is transit byzantium it's on scat records this was originally on spin art but it's a cd only release which i've had since it came out um Bill Fox was in uh, a Cleveland area band, garage pop band called The Mice, which was, they were active in the mid to late 80s, I believe. They don't have a lot of, a lot of um, released material. Like I think maybe they only have one LP and then some singles. Maybe, it was, maybe there's a bit more than that, but um, really great stuff if you can track it down. And he had, he had two solo LPs that he released in the 90s. This is the second one, 1998. Um, he's often cited as like um, a big influence on Robert Pollard and Guided by Voices. Uh, that This is like the mice, for instance, very like lo-fi pop. Um, this album is mostly just him, and I, like, mostly he's playing all the, doing everything. I think it's, uh, like, four-track recordings done in his apartment or whatever. Um, I think after he toured for this, he more or less disappeared for a long time, and then came back and released at least one more album and did some touring, I don't know that he's he's very like enigmatic and you know tough to nail down but at some point when in when he resurfaced he agreed to have his albums reissued and this is I think that was a while ago I don't know what took so long um, so really excellent really excellent songwriter um, I feel like I can feel a little samey because it really is almost all just him. Looks like there's two tracks where he has addition, like additional uh, musicians. And so most of it is guitar, him, him playing guitar, him singing, him, like maybe there's harmonica, or some other instruments that he's also playing. Um, It's actually, uh, considering how long I've had the CD, I actually do listen to this. And so I had been thinking, I wish that they would, re wanting them to re reissue this on vinyl. And so when they did, I had to get it, even though I would prefer not to keep buying things, the same things over and over again. <laughs> um, yeah. Bill Fox, Transit Byzantium from 1998. Oh, not a surf, I think. One thing I've often thought about, the songs are so good, I feel like if the right band covered some of his, um, some of his songs, he gained some additional exposure. Supposedly not a surf covered one, covered one of the songs. I don't know that I've even heard it. I wasn't aware of that until recently. I must take my leave now, soldier girl. The train is coming soon. Your guitar is in the car. So I don't think I was sleeping very well and I, I woke up and the devil was like sitting there looking at, sitting on my bed, like I'm the, at the foot of my bed, just looking at me. And I'm like, what the hell do you want? <laughs> and he looked at me and he says, you need to buy 
the, re the 30th anniversary reissue of Confessions of a Knife. And I'm like, I already have that. Like, or I already, I already have that. Why do I need that reissue? And he's like, two words, Hellfire Vinyl. And so I got up and I placed an order for the, <laughs> this album. So this is the 1990 album, originally released on Wax Tracks. And this is a, I guess Wax Tracks is back up and running. So this is um, My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, Confessions of a Knife. Not the kind of thing I typically show very often. This, um, this is uh, industrial dance music. They use a lot of samples from like B movies and other uh, usually spoken word audio clips. Um, I've, I've seen them, I don't know. Several, I saw them several times. I think that the Sextasy Ball Tour being the most memorable <laughs> where they had, uh, it was them with Lords of Acid and God Lives Underwater. It was at, it was at the First Avenue Main Room, which is like a thousand person or a little more type facility. And they basically take over the whole place. There's people in cages. There's, um, there's a lot of like strap-ons, things like that. It was quite a spectacle. Um, never, uh, never reached that level again for me. I, I take it maybe earlier shows were kind of crazy like that too. Anyway. Also on, on this album, if I was doing a Jesus playlist for John over at the digital gramophone, this does have the electric Messiah mix of Cooler Than Jesus. Cooler with a K, of course. So um, yeah, that would be that was my selection. So yeah, here's, it's a pretty nice, um, supposedly cut from the original analog tapes of all things. This is the inner sleeve. And I got, I have to, you know, show you the Hellfire vinyl that, that, you know, the devil wanted me to have. It's actually not, you know, it's not bad looking vinyl, but Hellfire, you really, you're really hoping that something will pop a little more than that. Thanks for bearing with me. We'll probably, um, I'll probably be back with more um, indie pop stuff next month. Um, I do have uh, at least a couple, a couple more self-indulgent type videos. <laughs> Coming shortly, I have a short vacation right at the beginning of March. There, I might not get something out for one week, but I do have a lot of new releases coming, so there should be should be a steady flow of of douche <laughs> coming your way. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging out. Don't forget your coat. Cheers. <laughs>